Netflix. How did that even happen? So when you do this type of work, this social media work, there are many different ways to spread content, to create content, to make money. This was just one of those things. They wanted to put something together, tell the story. I, I, when I spoke to the team, would I, I kind of labeled it as a time capsule of the social media unraveling of this case, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, the defamation trial of the century. The Love and Order Podcast with your host, Lawyer Lamore. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on this podcast are not legal advice that can be relied on. They are based solely on the limited information provided. These opinions do not create any attorney-client relationship. Those seeking legal advice should contact an attorney in the appropriate jurisdiction and practice area. What a whirlwind. I have been in this chaotic, amazing, beautiful journey for the last year, and I have all of you to thank. We are now on season three of Love and Order. And you know what I'm doing with this first episode? So I'm doing a solo episode, but I'm also releasing episode number two simultaneously. And I'll tell you why. I am a big, big proponent of networking and training, refining your skills to get you to where you want to be. So The first guest on the pod for season three is Leonard Atlas, and he is going to be giving us a preview of his upcoming workshop. Obviously, there's a discount code. I don't get anything from it. This is something you you guys know how I am. This is something that I think is valuable for all of you. So I wanted to have an episode on it. I wanted to give you a preview of it, and I wanted to give you access to it. So I will include all of the details in the show notes. I will include the same details in the episode two show notes with Leonard. He's going to tell you all about cockroach marketing. So you're going to learn to be a cockroach to get what you want. Okay. That's going to be episode two. It's already up. It's already up. But this episode is about you, me, and us. You've already seen the title. We're on Netflix. I <laughs> I guess where I need to start is I am so thankful for all of you. I am so thankful that my platform did what it did last year and continues to do. Full transparency. I've lost a lot of fo- followers in the last uh, maybe six months, five months, whatever it is. But who gives an F? Who gives an F? Who cares? The ones who are meant to be here are here. So if you're here, thank you. And thank you for the opportunities that your viewership has given me. And that's all I've ever asked of any of you. Stay engaged. If you're not engaged, let me know what you want to see from me. Let me know what topics you want me to cover, all of that. Because this all started on TikTok. We are the TikTok fam. And if you've come here from the Netflix special, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard versus, versus, I always say verse, and that's a, that jargon is for songs, a verse, like a rap verse. Um, (laughs) So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's get into what you all want to know. Netflix. Yes, I'm on Netflix. You're on Netflix. You are the reason we are all on Netflix. So number one, really the title should have been, thank you for getting me on Netflix. And let me tell you how that happened because I know a lot of people want to know. And as I've said before, oop, there goes an alarm. As I've said before, you know, working girl, working women, working humans, those alarms, they're what, they're what actually get us by and get us to actually do the things that we're supposed to do. Back to Netflix. How did that even happen? So even before we get to that, I gained a lot of traction on TikTok. First, talking about Kelly Clarkson's prenup and her divorce. That was a topic that I didn't see many people talking about online. And I would read these articles. Listen, I've been reading TMZ 
since I was what, eight? I have been all over, or I was all over Perez Hilton when I was in high school, college. Um, and then I realized it, it was just really a gossip tabloid on the internet. It, it was not my thing. And let me tell you guys a little secret, something I've never said out loud. Perez Hilton asked me to be on his podcast. And when I tell you, I about died because I know Perez, as I said, from way back when, and he would sit at the Starbucks on Fairfax, La Brea and Fairfax, maybe it was, or Santa Monica and Fairfax, the one on the corner. And that's where he would write his blog. And I knew that back then. I, ne you know, I never stalked him or anything. I just knew that because he would talk about it. Um, and I've been obsessed with him ever since. I thought what he was doing in the early days was what I really – uh, wanted to do in my career, kind of have a platform and talk about pop culture and all of that. As I grew older, became no offense, no offense, no offense, a little bit more sophisticated. I wanted to combine pop culture with the law, with logic, with behind the scenes things, juice that I know to be true. So when I saw this Kelly Clarkson divorce going on and no one was talking about it, sorry, I'm going to give myself credit for this. No one was talking about it. Okay. No one was talking about it. And I know a thing or two about prenups, right? Family law attorney for the last 10 years. I know a thing or two about prenups. Um, so I started talking about her prenup and the great thing about being an attorney in LA and having grown up in LA and Beverly Hills specifically, is that I know all the players. I know most of these attorneys personally. I have known of most of these attorneys from the time I was even, you know, even before law school, honestly, because they've always been the same attorneys have always been in the press for a very long time. Um, I have chosen now, and I think I said this in an episode, maybe in season two, or maybe in a recent TikTok, uh, there are some attorneys now that I have given the limelight to, the very limited limelight from my TikTok platform, um, and I've chosen not to do that anymore because during this last year when I really gained a lot of traction, I realized that they all suck. Sorry, sorry. Not the ones who have come on my podcast, but some of these people I talk about, it's, you know, don't meet your heroes. Don't meet your, ugh, blah, they're not my heroes, but they are just not good people. They are not good advocates for children's best interests. They are not good advocates for keeping families, you know, together while apart. Um, and so some of those videos I've, I've, I've archived, they're not, they're no longer there. Um, because they took the, the attention and in my opinion, used it for evil. Uh, you guys all know my, my, the, the thing I hate most about this work are the attorneys. I don't really like lawyers. The ones I like, I hang out with all the time. The rest of them, there's the mature, sophisticated side that I was talking about earlier. <laughs> Anywho. So Kelly Clarkson got me a lot of traction, loved it. Then we get to Kim and Kanye. Kim and Kanye and their bifurcation. Again, no one was talking about this. No one. I came up on the case number, looked up what they were filing, started reading it. Number one, I really was most interested in the prenup, like, did they attach the prenup as an exhibit? Because I want to see the language in there. By the way, it was, if you didn't watch my TikTok live on that, it was a, uh, you know, the prenup kind of looked like it was typed on a typewriter. It was very old school looking, whatever. Um, so anyway, that was another thing that gained a lot of traction, Kim changing her name back, a lot of traction, lots of attention. And then I would really say the third thing, the most recent thing that got me a lot of attention Thanks to all of you, because this was actually something that one of you, my amazing friends on the internet, forced me to cover. And that is the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard defamation trial. Lamore didn't want to cover this trial. 
Why? I've said it time and time again. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, to me, toxic. They were toxic back then. They are toxic now. They were toxic during their relationship. During this trial, there was a lot of toxicity, a lot of negativity. Um, and guess what? It was a defamation trial. So I wasn't really that interested in it. Um, but it was going to be streamed. It was going to be um, televised. So, you know, why not? I am an avid Court TV fan. I love Court TV. Um, I've been on Court TV a few times. Again, thanks to all of you. Um, so it was just something I felt, okay, it's going to be, a kind of, it'll be interesting a couple of weeks, what, six weeks. There'll be some moments I will post about them. I will talk about them. And wouldn't, you know, this defamation trial turned into the trial of the century. Defamation on its own is not that interesting. We had a defamation trial with black China and the Kardashians and Jenners during all of this. And it wasn't that Juicy. I mean, to be honest, I would have loved to have cameras in that courtroom, but you know, it came and went during this trial. So, you know, not a really big deal, not a lot of fun to be had, but little did we know that this trial was basically family law live. Okay. It was like a family law trial in the middle of LA, power players all over the place, power elite on the stand, the people that keep these people together on the stand, the people who have all of their secrets and keep them close to their chest. Those people were on the stand revealing what they had to, testifying under oath. Wow. Wow. And I have to say every single day for six weeks, minus weekends, I do take weekends off. I was posting five to 10 videos a day. I was doing lives every other day, having the time of my life. But guess what? I was also still running my firm, my family law practice in LA. And it really took it out of me. I don't think I slept in that six weeks at all. And following that six weeks, during that six weeks as well, I was also doing many interviews, BBC, MSNBC, Business Insider, different podcasts. Um, and I started my own podcast during all of this too. Or right, Actually, it was right before. And then I got into, I, I believe, the second season of this podcast, which also didn't almost, also almost didn't come to be because the intention with the podcast was to have a co-host. It wasn't going to be called Love and Order because the the prospective co-host didn't really like the name. Uh, it was a male identifying co-host. Um, and I believe it was January 18th, which was actually the anniversary of opening my own solo practice now over five years ago. Um and that was supposed to be day one of our recording our of, of our podcast, and it just didn't happen. We had a falling out. It didn't happen. And then I thought, you know what? I put all this time and energy into wanting this to happen with someone else. I might as well do it on my own, use the name I love. And as you guys know, I say it all the time, I want this to be what you want it to be. I have several ideas about it. Maybe if you want to be part of the think tank, and I will make a note because I will add it, um, to the notes for the show. If you want to be part of the think tank, let's just do a zoom together. Let's have a private event online together, brainstorm the future of lawyer, Lamour and love and order, because this is a space for all of you. I want to entertain all of you. I want to teach all of you. I want to answer your questions. I want to explain things you want to learn more about. Um, so we'll do that. Okay. I think, I think it's a good idea because I love you guys and it's just uh, without you there, there, none of this, none of this. Okay. None of it. So as I said before, I am filled with gratitude. Um, and let's get to Netflix. So Netflix is by far the biggest thing that came out of this. Might I add, I was also featured on uh, Jewish journal which for me being a Persian Jew 
in LA is just, wow, what a feat. I was featured on Jewish Journal. And guess what? That came from Netflix from Netflix. That is on my Instagram, that article. Uh, there's a really great quote at the end of it, if I do say so myself. And it really embodies what I love about this work. Um, so Netflix, how did that even happen? So when you do this type of work, this social media work, there are many different ways to spread content, to create content, to make money. One of them is licensing your video. So get this, you already made the video. No one told you what to do. It was your creative work that you put likely on your own platform already. Netflix was not the first to ask me if they could use clips of this and that and whatever. Netflix was the most prominent. And let me tell you, it wasn't Netflix directly. That is something I think people don't understand about the process. It wasn't Netflix calling Lawyer Lamore, Netflix calling all of these creators. It was a production company that had the idea that, you know, chose who they wanted to feature. Um, and, I, and I'm giving you this information from my personal knowledge, what I know to be true. So this was just one of those things. They wanted to put something together, tell the story. I, I, when I spoke to the team, would I, I kind of labeled it as a time capsule of the social media unraveling of this case, the social media coverage of this case, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, the defamation trial of the century. At a meeting with them, obsessed with them, they wanted certain clips. I said, yes, I know a lot of my counterparts, my amazing friends on the internet said, no, I don't want you to use my clips. And they're being asked way more than I am about licensing their clips because a lot of their clips were much more controversial, controversial, excuse me, and attention grabbing than mine. What I tried to do, my pattern was I started with something witty every video. I, at least I would try. Obviously, I wanted to keep your engagement for the full time of the video, the full duration of the video, and hopefully give you something of value in the middle. Always ask a question at the end. Wink, wink. Um, and so I did that, and I stayed as neutral as I could be. Now, we talked a lot about the jury. This is a jury trial. So... If we are acting as jurors, because we are outsiders, but we very well could have been on the jury if we met those certain qualifications, lived there, all of that. So we're just, you know, lawyer or not, you're still an average Joe spectator. So emotions go up and down. Maybe you pick sides or whatnot. And that happened with me. But I tried to still keep neutral because certain things didn't make sense. Certain things were not aligned with the law. Certain reactions. I felt were unwarranted. Um, there are videos I'm not, I'm not thrilled about being on the internet. I won't take them down, but I'm not, you know, it was my opinion and my thoughts during the process, but they are not things that I still believe to be true. And really out of the over 250 videos, TikTok videos I made on this, on this uh, trial, it was really just maybe one or two that I'm like, ugh, why did I say that? But I was in the moment. That's how, you know, jurors, the judge, every player has ups and downs with their emotions and their opinions when it comes to trials, okay? Especially a six-week trial. Anytime you're hearing the story, every twist and turn, you're like, oh, I can't believe that happened. Wait, that doesn't sound true. Oh my God. If that one is true, that one thing is true, that totally changes the game. So there was a lot of that with me, but there really isn't any content that I am not proud of. So when I'm asked, I usually do license clips. I do. My advice to you, when you are making content on the internet, depending on what a production company or someone else is trying to use that clip for, your video for, your content for, they may be able to do it without your okay. So if anyone approaches you, my advice is 
try to control as much as you can. Because if you get in touch with these people or they get in touch with you and you're connecting with them and they say, I want to use this video, you might say, oh, you know, that's not my favorite. Can we instead use this? And they might say, you know what? Sure. Fine. If you're, you know, if you don't like the video, let's, let's figure a different one out. Let's tell you the purpose of this. You know, this is the topic we want to cover. Do you have another video on that topic? They will be much more receptive to including and not including what you want them to. So be in control. If there is a money transaction to be had, and my advice is push for it, push for it, push for it because it is your work that they then likely want to make money on. Um, so always push for the money, always push to make a deal and be in control, be in control. It's, it's the, it's the quintessential Kardashian, you know, golden rule. They have an SEX tape of you and they're telling you that they're about to start circulating it dispersing it, making money off of it. You're either going to be part of the deal or you're not. Whether you like the content or not, if they can use it, if there's a loophole and they can use it without asking you for permission, they are going to do it. So make a deal. So there was a production company that approached me. I worked with them. I had a feeling it was going to be on Netflix. I, I'm not sure what the conversations were, but but I, when I saw this three-part series, and let me tell you, it was first and it was international. It was, it was, I think through BBC at one point, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that part I'm not sure about, but I know I had an international follower who sent me an amazing voice note on Instagram. By the way, Instagram is where I really, really can respond to your messages. So DM me on there. It might take a week. It might take two weeks, but I'm going to get to you. So if you ever want to say anything to me, do it on Instagram or in the TikTok comments. TikTok messages are a whole mess. And I took a really long social media break, so I don't even know how to work the, the messages. <clears throat> so I had someone, an amazing, beautiful follower with a gorgeous accent, telling me that she saw a Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard documentary. Um, and I was in it. And when I tell you, because, sorry, that was the sound of the water bottle. When I tell you that when she said that, I, I was so shocked that this documentary, I, I was shocked, just as shocked as I am now even talking about it. I was shocked that it actually became a thing because so many opportunities that I've spoken to so many production teams, so many people in the entertainment business have not actually come to fruition. I will have talks with people weeks and weeks, an entire year, the project doesn't get done. They want to license something. They want to do another interview. Uh, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't happen. So when this amazing internet friend messaged me, on Instagram and sent a voice note and told me, and I believe she also sent me a video. I was on the floor with excitement. I was like, oh my God, it's actually like on television screens. And remember, I had been on court TV at this point, all these other outlets, I24, ITV, whatever. And not whatever, it's just my brain right now. It's a little fried. Uh, so I was just, you know, kind of okay with, okay, I signed another deal and maybe it, it'll, it'll work. It won't work. It'll show up somewhere. It won't be popular, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, pleasure to work with these people and, and what a compliment for anyone to love your content so much that they also want to use their platform to spread your valuables. If I have made something of value, the validation comes from the engagement. The validation comes from the spreading of my word, right? So I was just so, you know, uh, 
thankful and so taken aback by so many people receiving my messages, my opinions, my education so well to the point where they also wanted to use their much bigger platforms to spread the information I was sharing, to spread my opinions. So when this follower sent that to me, I was, wow, wow, wow. And you know, I haven't been as active on social because thank you, God, my business has just taken off even more so than before. I would always say how busy I was. I'm always, I've always been very busy. Thank you, God. Um, but it just took on a different, different form after all of this, uh, TikTok attention. And also, if you are on YouTube, you will see, yes, I am engaged to the love of my life. Um, so around September of last year, I also met the man of my dreams, human of my dreams, perfect embodiment of a man. And I spent the last year spending time with him. Nothing was more important to me than building this connection with someone I saw the future with. So I spent time doing that. Um, and let me say something else. This Netflix thing, Netflix thing. This huge accomplishment of being featured on Netflix, which many of my friends were also featured. So congratulations to them. That is something I never imagined. That is something I'm so grateful for. That is something that I was shocked to see how prominently I was featured. Really, I was on all three episodes, all three episodes. Okay. And I, I, I was just sitting there like, what? They really used all. Of wow. 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 I didn't have to really wait that long to be on the screen. I say that humbly because again, I've signed so many of these deals. Nothing came of it. And I kind of wanted something to commemorate all of my hard work. You know, they featured Christopher Melcher. That was an interview that I will cherish forever because it was really the start of uh, attorney Melcher and I's friendship. He is such a great mentor, such a great human being, such an ethical, professional attorney. And we didn't say this on the episode, but Christopher Melcher represented Kanye West in the very, very beginning. And then he said bye-bye. And my prediction was, this guy must be so ethical that he's like, peace out, bruh. I can't deal with this. You're not about to embarrass me in court. Uh, do I know that to be true? I have no idea. But but the timing kind of matched up with what I was thinking. Um, so just an amazing experience. I loved it. And can I say that my producer, Otis, his voiceover, the intro to this podcast, the disclaimer of this podcast, his voice was featured too. And that, can I, listen, a lot of people say, you know, use these, you know, Upwork, Fiverr, this and that for people to, to do your podcast intros and, and whatever voiceovers you need. I'm so thankful I used Otis because he deserved to be featured on Netflix alongside me. He is one half of this podcast. Without editing, without the, you know, this amazing border, without every software that I've barely learned to use, but thankfully, because of him, I do know how to use it. It's where, where would this podcast be? It would be nowhere. It would be on my computer. It would have been one episode in the garbage. Okay. So I was so thankful to see that. I was so thankful to see my TikToks and this podcast love and order on there. It was just <sighs> amazing. Amazing. And let me say something else. The podcast episode that was featured, I believe it was several. So I had Michael Morse. That was my, I believe my first or second episode. I think it was the first episode. One of my best, best, best friends. Um, we didn't even have video for that episode. That was the first episode of this podcast and it's on Netflix and it features one of my best friends. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What an accomplishment. I am, I'm so thankful. I am so happy. Um, and I'm just so proud of myself because putting this podcast together again, if it wasn't for Otis and my friend Ivan, who introduced me to Otis, I wouldn't know what I was doing. Okay. 
I wouldn't know what I was doing. So I was very happy that a lot of the key players who helped me make the podcast what it is were also featured. So we have Otis, we have Michael Morse, Chris Melcher. It was just great. It was just great. And one of those things that, you know, you better believe I have at Netflix in my Instagram bio. And please, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram. Remember, that is the platform where my own mom, my mommy, okay, (laughs) my mom (laughs) makes fun of me. Because she's like, yeah, I I see that you got a lot of hits on uh, TikTok, but no one follows you on Instagram. She's like, you got 11 likes. Big whoop. (laughs) So there's that. Please follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Please get on YouTube so you can see my ring. I can't believe that sometimes I wear my Apple Watch with this beautiful engagement ring, but I have to because... It's just a lifestyle thing. But when I go out, I do switch the Apple Watch. So please don't make fun of me if you're watching the video on YouTube. Um, And with that, I want to say, again, said it a million times, but I can't say it enough. I love you. Thank you for all of the opportunities. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being friends. And thank you for being so loyal to this community, to me. Please rate the pod. Please DM me if you have ideas for the pod and check out the show notes. Check out the next episode. I love you. Bye. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on this podcast are not legal advice that can be relied on. They are based solely on the limited information provided. These opinions do not create any attorney-client relationship. Those seeking legal advice should contact an attorney in the appropriate jurisdiction and practice area.